Aha. Hi guys. I'm I'm waiting to see if Billy can figure out how to sign on. I already started earlier than I had to hang up and then I had to start all over again. So let's see if he can <clears throat> find me. My name is Hannah. This is Indie Buzz Rocks. I'm actually very excited today. I get to interview Mr. Billy Stobo, who I'm messaging. But give me a minute, okay, to get a little situated. How are you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's going to try and find it. So... That'll be good. We are waiting for him. I have got a stack of questions. Um, but earlier I was playing um, his. Oh. Here it is. See if I can add him. <sighs> yes, music box micro. You are. You made it. I was typing in Billy Stobo the whole time. <laughs> How are you? Can you see it? I sent you a little button to push. Aha! You made it. Ah, I found you. Awesome. Looking good. Styly, styly. Look like you're on the ocean. Well, no, you know, we got to keep the sun off this fair skin of mine. Yes, you do. Absolutely. I can't hear you all that well, so it's very loud out here on the on the uh, windward. Is it? We're here out in front of uh, Petey's shop here, only in Venice. Okay, so I have a really sweet shot of that from last night. So you guys, okay. You guys handle the evening so beautifully, by the way. I I always have to just, I can't, I haven't been out in so long. I don't know what to do anymore. But <laughs> this is uh, the beautiful Venice Vintage Micro Stage Boss. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's, that's, out in front that's of the uh, only Venice. The backdrop, yeah, that's very good. Oh, excellent shot. And... This is your most amazing truck. Yes, the support vehicle. That carries a whole bunch of amazing equipment. Where There was you, quite a bit of it in there last night. I tell you, it was like a Tetris game trying to get it all in there. Well, you I, had, I had nine amplifiers. I had uh, three guitars uh, and two drum sets in that truck. You told me three drum sets last night. It was crazy. All I need is a dog. <laughs> or three. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. We got, the, we got the music boxes already set up for tonight. Here, I'll show you. Oh, my gosh. It looks so beautiful. What time are you starting? Uh, we'll start around like 7.30, probably. Okay. Get it going. Good. You, it just depends good? on who's out here. If there's, if there's enough people out here, I'll start earlier. Oh, oh, good. I might send down um, a few people to come play music with you. Do a little jam well, session. Well, we don't really do the jam sessions, you know, uh, only because it's uh, it can get a little bit of a free-for-all here in Venice because everyone's got a guitar. Uh, See, look, even I got a guitar today. Look at that. Oh, aren't you special? <laughs> Are you going to play something for us? Uh, well, no, not, not, it's probably not the best uh, situation here. It's very loud and Too obnoxious. Hard to hear. Yeah. Good. So I'll try to get a little closer. And it's hard to hear over here. Come a little closer, darling. I've got a boatload of questions for you, but I don't want to stress you out. I know you have a big day tomorrow. Well, tonight and tomorrow. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll be on the Radio Venice tomorrow, singing with uh, Lucky Otis, who's playing tonight in the music box. So oh. he's going to be, yeah, it should be fun. Uh, he's. And uh, they, I think they've got someone from Maui playing and someone from the bush in Australia. So Radio Venice really gets a wide range of people. It's pretty wow. cool. People are flying in. They're flying. No, they're flying in their own satellite transmissions <laughs> from outer space. Oh, really? Yeah, these are people that, because he, you know, 
he he can get people coming in from anywhere in the world, so he gets quite an international crowd in this place. Fancy. This is kind of small, so you know. Oh, I'm so <laughs> looking forward to it. Well, um, I'm already going to put it out there that I probably want to like do a do over since I can already feel my my flaws and failures. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, don't ask all my questions. I, re I request a do-over just in case. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, we can do it in a better location. That's fine. Or when it's it, – earlier on today, it was nice and mellow. There was nothing going on. But now, really, they've picked up here down at the beach. So. Well, I was there yeah. at 6 this morning. You guys were uh, already packed up. Yeah, we were trying to get a, get our, our – oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, You're that's how we – <laughs> I have to get my blue views. Blue. I didn't get much. I'll tell you, we were here till after three loading that thing, oh, and then uh, and then I was up at seven when the woman was wrangling the sh the shop next to me. So oh, I was there at six. <laughs> oh, you should have tapped on the door. I don't know which one. I didn't. No, no, it's in the. Anybody who's you know got I'm, things, I'm actually, things to I, do. I'm actually in the the music box. Pardon me. I say I'm actually in the music box. Oh, you are? Yeah, it loads up on its back on the trailer, and then I I rigged it up so to, to turn it and convert it into a like a covered wagon. Oh my god, that's so cute! Well, it's too late by the time I'm done, and it's, I'm too exhausted to drive anywhere, so I just sleep in it. It's yeah, easy. that's it's easier than sleeping in the truck. How yeah, you, you're you're phenomenal. That's fabulous. <laughs> There's so many people who are here, so can I get right into some questions? Sure. I've got a bunch. Okay, okay. So my first question is the basic foundations, like where were you born and raised? I was born in a in about four different places. So it, it's a little hard to to say. <laughs> you can only be born once. Well that's not true. <laughs> you know, that's the whole point. I I really don't know. I, you know, my, my parents were were uh, aliens from another planet. Oh. And uh so they don't you know, they they really couldn't keep track of it all. So oh. I think on the documentation, I'm known as William of Orange. Oh, William of Orange. Are you a lord yeah. or a duke or a prince or a king? Well, what? Oh, the original one was a was a king, I believe. Really? In fact, I think I think the uh, the new king of Holland is is uh, William of Orange also. William Alexander. Oh, well, so you are William of Orange. Yes, I'm William of Orange. That's what they refer to me as. Well, it's very, it is a pleasure to meet you, Mr. William of Orange. I like that. I really do. I think that's phenomenal. And I also I, wanted to say. I, 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 did, to I did grow up down in Redondo Beach. Oh, that's right. Redondo yeah. Beach. Redondo Beach, yeah. So it took, it took a bit of beach, uh, beach culture and, and lingo to kind of wipe, scrub my old accent off. <laughs> um, well, you did a great job. Yeah, well, you know, after I've had a few beers in the day, it sort of creeps back in. A little salt water down with the waves, and you're fine. Oh, man, I had a good salty bit this morning. The waves were great, so I was out there singing songs for the surfers. Oh, they must have loved you. Aren't you? Oh, yeah, they're really interested in that. <laughs> wow, <laughs> so not, there's so sure. many people that are here, Billy, and I think they're here to hear all about who you are. So I'm really excited. Um, I wanted to ask you, what is your most um, favorite thing about life? Favorite thing about life? Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> I think it's, I, you know, that's a tough one. I know uh, I, it's probably a lot is just sort of creating stuff. I, I love making stuff. I, I, I make things physically. I do carpentry, and I used to do architectural sculpting, and just constantly doing some sort of creative thing and uh whether i like it or not that's the kind of that's why i mean it I'm not 100 percent sure if i call it my favorite but it's my compulsion so i guess it is it's got to be my favorite you're a tinkerer like uh tinkerer. i am a tinkerer you're tinkerer i do I, I think i would have been in the old days i'd be the guy you know pushing a wee cart up the dirt road pushing from town to cart. town but you're but you're william of orange you're a lord yeah, well, that incognito. Yeah, uh, it would be up the <laughs> up the um, driveway into your chateau. Yeah, <laughs> that's my day job. Pardon? That's that part's my day job. Oh right. <laughs> um, well, I was kind of thinking um, that perhaps um, 
there would be somebody super special in your life that's a little wee thing that um that might have taught you some things in life and i was wondering if there was like maybe one or two things that come to you that make you that she has taught you kind of growing up <laughs> uh she taught me that i was a lot stronger than i thought i was for sure so if, if for those of you who don't know this is his daughter oh, my daughter yeah and, my daughter she's a, pardon? she's a little she's a, a little magic being of course everyone's daughter should be yeah. and uh mine's no different for sure and she's uh she's you know when you get to a certain point and you have children you start to realize how important a lot of things are you have a new understanding about your own parents what they went through and how you identify with different generations that's that's a huge lesson that you get but you definitely learn uh how strong you are uh because you have to do you know you have to be stronger than your typical selfish self and uh and that's always a great lesson isn't that interesting you know being selfish is actually a very strong thing to do <laughs> so to be strong against yourself yourself means to be unselfish kind of right? yeah to some to some extent yeah that's good that's i funny. can't imagine anyone anyone who uh, who has a child isn't affected that way but you know everyone deals with it a little differently well i think you've done a good job because um as I or she's done a good job teaching you about being unselfish and strong in that you put together such a beautiful micro stage and the way you handled those um, young boys playing last night in the um, blind snow. Oh, uh, behind the rose. Behind the rose. That's my yeah. dyslexia. <laughs> behind the rose. Um, was just beautiful. I mean, I could see your patience and your kindness. So, you, your daughter has taught you well. <laughs> oh, most definitely. I've been very, I've been very fortunate. I've had, uh, I've been surrounded by very, very strong women my whole life. I had three older sisters and and a very uh, powerful mother and and uh, just being around very strong women. I think is one of the greatest things that you could experience as a man. Ah. You learn, you learn way beyond what you know most most men knew and uh it 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 just uh you you understand yourself more i mean obviously it's better because you understand women but i think you understand much more yourself when you're you learn a lot from women so well and my, and my daughter's quickly approaching one being coming one so she's on the list too did you say she was 14 uh she just turned 13 13 13 yeah um, can i ask what is her name uh it's lily Oh, Lily. I have a niece named Lily. And Anna, it's me. And Anna, you have to name Lily. That's beautiful. Is she, no, she, is she named from um, a family member? No, no, we just like the name. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful flower. I love it. Lily. Good job. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready for another question? Sure. Uh, what was your first instrument that you learned to play? Um, well, I, kind of the drums. My dad used to be a drummer in the RAF, in the Royal Air Force, he was in the pipe bands. And uh, so, so he always had sticks around. And um, even though he, he wasn't playing by the time I came around, he, he always had sticks around. So I think I probably learned to play the drums first. Oh. But I didn't really do, didn't really focus on it till music till after high school and all that, and start picking up the bands. But then I started singing in a band because that just seemed easier. <laughs> and uh, that was fun back in the '80s when it was big hair bands. It was low fun. Like for leggings for men. <laughs> oh man, the guys in my band used to wear <laughs> spandex. I was like, dude, I'm, you just try to get me in one of those things. Forget you. Oh really? <laughs> Oh, He's well, I'm sure you'll be wearing those tonight. Standing. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you really going to wear those? Petey? <laughs> He's got something for you. <laughs> Only in Venice Vintage. <laughs> what um, but, was uh, your first I am, a, I am a bona fide uh, guitar addict. Oh. I mean, I, I, uh, I picked up the guitar along the way, just playing with a bunch of musicians and whatnot. But um, that really is where I feel my connection to music for sure um so you prefer to just to sing and play the guitar or just the guitar say again 
Um, you were saying that your instrument that you prefer to um, play with is the guitar, and is it singing with the guitar or just the guitar? Like, do you oh, singing. It's singing. I mean, I'm not much of a guitar player. It's really I'm more of a songwriter, so that's my vehicle for getting getting the songs out, giving them some, some identity, and to share them because you gotta be able to share them with other people. You need to have to um, be able to play an instrument. Yeah. And it's funny, I know a lot of singers, and especially now that the music box, everyone wants to come up and sing in the music box. And I said, well, were you gonna, you're just going to get up there and sing? Oh, well, don't you have a band? Or I'm like, oh, yeah, let me pull one of those out of my pocket. Um, but it fascinates me how people can can go so far musically and and not ever play an instrument. I, I don't understand how they do it, but they manage to do it. So, Not me. I'm, I'm uh, In fact... So much so that I have a ridiculous guitar collection. Oh, you do? <laughs> I think I have like 25 guitars. Ah. Well, and I'm, I've made a few guitars too. So it's, it, you know, I have to, I have to keep my, uh, my justifications for multiple guitars up. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. You've got, and you've been doing this like way before the virus and stuff. So. Oh, a yeah, yeah. Of, I'm saying a lot of people are picking up, you know, skills and creative things that they've always wanted to do. Um, and luckily, they've had the dedication to do it and the perseverance. So you had started that at an early age, obviously. How, what age well, did you start playing the guitar? Do you, oh, you said after high school or something. Yeah, I was early 20s. 20s. Playing. I was actually uh, just a straight up jock. I didn't play music, wasn't into music, really. Played sports uh, up until just like college, and then I uh, had an injury that knocked me out of that. So I ended up picking up music. So, and then it ruined my life. Oh, how did it ruin <laughs> your life? Tried to ruin my life. Oh, you mean it expanded your life? Yeah, well, it reinvented and me. It does, it does it all, doesn't it? Darn rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready for another question? Sure. Um, what was the first song you learned to sing? Wait, say that again? <laughs> say that again? Oh, what was the first song you learned to sing? Oh, God, that's, that's impossible. Isn't that? I, I've been singing since I was... My, my, uh, my father was a great singer, and my parents threw huge parties, big-time partiers. So... They were always, you know, all their friends would sing songs. It's all old Scottish and Irish songs. And um, so there was, so I was always the little one up dancing and singing with them. And, you know, I, I can't even, couldn't even begin to remember where, where all that started. Do you, do you, so do you happen to know one of your old, like, Irish kind of ch childhood songs? Uh, Got it, sorry. No, actually, I mean, they, yeah, it's a little bit of a blur. <laughs> so uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know him quite often then. I can well, like, uh, you know, my 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 father was a big uh, Irish Rovers fan, so you know we had all we always had that kind of stuff running around. I think I had I st think I still have the LP of Irish Rovers when I was a little kid. So I often play some of their songs. I don't know who um, they are. That's just an old. They actually they were Canadian, I believe, but they were Irish kids from Canada. So they were they did uh, in back in the sixties. That's a good way to confuse everybody. <laughs> Irish kids from Canada in the 60s. <laughs> well, you know, it's like Scottish kids from Australia became ACDC. You know, it just happens. Right. That's right. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's a lot. All these. Well, you know, you, that's when you, when you get, you straddle two cultures. That's usually when you create something. You have, you have a better arsenal for creating things, I think. You know, that's, I definitely attribute my, my straddle uh, and that way, for sure. Yes, I can understand that. Why it gives you more um, expansion, more blow up. Yeah. <laughs> and my, okay. you know, and you here in uh, in Southern California, you know, it was a, there's a lot of immigrants from Britain, all over Britain. I and in Britain, British. Britain are uh, you know they they keep to themselves more often, but when they come here, their safety in numbers, they gravitate to each other and they kind of put away the old world re um, resentments and become friends. So I grew up really around every, all kinds from Liverpudlians to Londoners to people from Belfast and Dublin. So you get, you get a whole range of what uh, sort of that, what the world will give you in that culture, which is, is obviously such a huge different culture. 
you wouldn't get that if you were back there because you'd be more isolated in the particular neighborhoods you're in. So. Yes, this is very true. Now, yeah. did you have you visited all these places? Well, not specifically, but I traveled so much in my uh, in the '90s and early part of 2000s that basically didn't really live anywhere. It was spending extended trips to stay with family over the years and growing up, going back and forth and whatnot, but nothing uh, permanent, no. That's very interesting. You know, I'd love to I, um, find out about your father playing in the um, in the Air Force. Didn't Elvis play in the Air Force band? Or was he in the Army? I think Elvis was in the Army, yeah. But I, uh, Army band. He, yeah, I don't know. My, my, all my only stories I got from my dad was that he, uh, he, he could dodge every bit of uh, work he had to do in the military by just saying he had to go to band practice. <laughs> That's all he told me. So, I I mean, look, it takes a lot of courage and a lot of bravery to go into yeah. that kind of field. So I can't, you know, God bless him. Look, I think look who he brought into this world, you know? He had some other reasons for what he was like, you know? Okay. Yeah. Are you ready for another question? Sure. Uh, what was your very first gig? And what band did you play with? Or was it yourself? My first gig? Mm -hmm. uh, first gig. Hey, bud. Jesus. Okay. I don't know, actually. Um, it's probably somewhere in San Francisco with a this cover band I used to sing with back in the mid-'80s, probably. Oh yeah. Yeah. What was the, what was your favorite cover band song to sing? Uh, well, they we ended up not being a cover band, but it started off as a cover band. It was a I didn't remember what they were called back then. To be honest, it was a long time ago. Uh, but so they ended up becoming this band called Begin Ending, which is a strange name, but it seemed to make sense at the time. Oh yes, <laughs> it makes sense to me. I get it. Okay. I think it was because it was the '80s, and everyone knew. Who, anybody that knew anything knew it was the beginning of the end. Is that, we're, <laughs> so, we're kind of in that place now, haven't we? We've kind of come yeah. full circle. So. <laughs> okay. Well, all right then. Okay. Are you ready for another question? I think so. Do you have any tattoos? Say again? Do you have any tattoos? <laughs> uh, yes, I do have one. Ooh, what is it? Um... It's a raven in the moon. A full moon or a, what kind of moon? Uh, well, it's more like a crescent moon. Crescent moon. Ooh. Yeah. Did, did you design that? Uh, no, it's a it's a Haydn design, which is Northwest Indian natives from Canada. You know, uh, there's it's like a tribe up the west coast, up above Vancouver. I spent some time in Alaska and I go. H A Y D E N? It's H A I D A N, I believe. Native American um, culture. Wow. Yeah. Aren't you the well I spent traveled? I spent some time up in, uh, in, in Alaska, so Lord. I kind of got hooked up with some of those guys up there and heard a lot about the stories, the mythology, and that just seemed kind of interesting to me. So. What is the mythology of it? Oh, well, the uh, the raven's the one who brought the moon to the earth. Oh. It's a long story about him becoming a, a leaf and being drunk by the god, by the great god in the sky's daughter, and he becomes the great god's grandson. And he gets entrusted to uh, come into his private chamber where he shows him the, the moon that he has hidden in a box. And then the raven pops in, turns back into the raven, he grabs the moon, he flies to, back to the earth. <gasps> Wow, that's amazing. But the backstory is that before he before he even goes up there, he, he makes a deal with the fishermen, saying if he can get if he can help them to be able to fish at night, that they gotta give him twenty percent of his catch. So when he brings the moon, and he can help the fishermen, uh, they renege on their offer and they they stiff him, and that's why the ravens always considered a mischievous thief. Because it, he goes, he's just he's just exacting his toll that he originally made. That's all. Oh well, he does the Raymond. <gasps> Fascinating little creatures, aren't they? Yes, we have a bunch here. Oh no, those are crows. Are they the same? Um, no, Raymond's a little bit different, but it, I mean they're the same. 
fairly similar. Okay. All right. Well, that's very interesting. I like that. It, I was going to say, what did the moon, I mean, we know that the, the moon brings our tides. Why, you know, like I was like, why did the raven? Well, you know, why did he decide to bring the moon back? Yeah, I love you. What a beautiful <laughs> thing! And do you? Does the moon have a and the raven have a special other connect like connection to you and your history, family history, or personal emotional history? I, I've just always been fascinated with those the birds. Um, you know, they're they're super intelligent and they're very. Uh, intricate uh group dynamics and socialized um um like families uh, plus they're the only bird i believe that flies upside down they can it's fly cool. upside down they fly i've seen it it's amazing i mean birds birds of prey can rotate they can fly upside down but they can't actually fly like flap their wings and, and control their flight except for the the raven and the crow i think can do it too Man. No way. Yeah. So they can literally fly upside down. Yeah, they barrel roll and they're flying upside down. They they say they they say they do it for hunting purposes so they could see their prey as they're running. Um, but I think they do it for fun because you see them in churchyards all over Scotland doing it, and they it looks like they're just having fun to me. So you have been to the churchyards in Scotland. Oh, I've been to many. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've <been> orange. <laughs> I like yeah, that. I've done. To, I've done the castles on um, National Geographic. <laughs> that whole for the, <laughs> you know, what I'm talking about. Anyway. Well, you know, there's a Stobo Castle in Scotland. You really have one? Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. And it's mine. <laughs> no, mine. it will be someday. Do you know all I'm gonna film that thing someday. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Cheers to Scotland, William of Orange. Yes. Oh, before, wait a minute. Um, I originally wanted to read this write-up on you that was posted um, several times, and I'm going to post it for you, but it is amazing how they talk about your historical um references in your some of your songs um even though you know they're 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 still revolving in the land that we're in and yeah. I find that now that i find out about who you are that that makes such perfect sense I oh like i'm that. i'm big on that I, in fact i think if i if i had never come across music i'd probably be a history teacher I, i'm you know all all kinds of histories just fascinates me all the story so I, I try to cultivate that in the music and uh, and I try to keep it as accurate as I can and uh, so in fact I'm I'm, I'm writing a, a song right now that I'm in the middle of it and it's tormenting me because it's like a story but I don't know the end of it yet it's like a book that you're reading that you're really into and you can't put it down so I've got this song that keeps rolling but you know when you're writing a song you, you, sometimes you just have no idea where it's going and it just keeps building and building with different characters and whatnot and it's um it's the same kind of thing when you're when you're trying to create a a history sort of reference song or or write a story you never never quite sure the hardest part i think is finishing it i find that you keep, that you keep going um i find it very interesting you know there is a very uh, poignant point in my life when I was in like fourth grade or whatever grade I was in, something like that. And I was reading a book um, by E.B. White, Stuart Little. Now this is Charlotte's Web uh, author. Yeah. And the story ended. And I vividly remember and feel it heart gut wrenching. I did not want it to end. I was really mad that the story ended. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So maybe. Yeah. You know, you just don't go there. You know? That's why they make. That's why they always make. Uh, you know, sequels <laughs> to movies. Right? You no know, one wants to. You know, if someone loves a movie so much, they want to see the rest of it or see it played out some way. Yes, I understand um, that. Yeah, I have. Uh, yes. Well, there you go. Maybe you're just writing sequels and you haven't put the uh, page break in yet, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for another question? Oh, and I want to hear yeah. that song actually. By the way. Well, when it's done, I'll play for it. Yay! <laughs> I'm trying to get it finished before <laughs> St. Patrick's Day because we're going to do a, a big St. Patrick's Day show here uh, on 17th. 
And I was trying to write it for that, but I don't think I'll finish it by then. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> well, it's going to so be like a mini, mini series of a song. I hope so. Are you going to do spoken word as well? So we don't, not everybody has to have their uh, instruments. <laughs> you said. Uh, you know, I didn't even think about that. That, was, that could be cool. I'm, I'm down with that. You said you were going to do that. I forgot when. Oh, it's on the 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Saint pa no, 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 the, never mind yet. Scratch all that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Didn't hear you. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I'm very excited. I'm super excited, St. Patrick's Day, and I want to hear the, the uh, song, but don't uh, don't finish it in a rush, you know. Good artist. Oh, um, no, no, no. Can't. You can never finish it in a rush. <laughs> they never let me. No. <laughs> yeah. Right. Are you ready? All for the songs, the, the songs are all. Um, you know, you, you, when you write a song, it's, it's it's like your kid, right? You create it, and there's like this in between, this early stage where you're you're cultivating it, and you're, you don't quite it doesn't quite have its legs yet. It's like having a little baby, and and then it becomes sort of adolescent, and you keep playing it, and you might try to play it live and see how it starts to uh, mutate and evolve, and then once it's old enough, and you um, and you you record it, that's when you kind of push it out into the world, and that's it's out of your hands at that point. So that's kind of the evolution of songwriting and, and how you approach it. So you're always, you know, just like your kids, you're, you're not going to, you'll never feel like you, you, you've uh, lost your responsibility with them. Exactly. So. <laughs> As I finish your sentence. Um, Bob, interestingly enough, I would really like some, I mean, on a side note, you know, that's good to know, you know, getting to, to as a creative, um, Finding a way to to end a project is really hard. Like, it's just yeah. hard. How do you know when a painting's finished? I mean, it's just hard. But like, songs are a little bit. You know, they do. Once you start finding, just yeah. You know. Well, that's why you know pop songs are easy because there's almost a formula that kind of tells you. Oh, I got my chorus and I got my verses and oh, good, I'm done. Um, but. Yeah, when you get into some other things, folk songs especially, they can go on and on and on. Dog I mean, Jesus, Bob Dylan. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> Bob Dylan, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's verse on verse. So. Um, okay, God rest his soul. And may we ask you another question? Yes. All right. Um, hmm. Well, I was going to ask you this question. I think I will. Can you share with us an earliest childhood memory? You kind of touched on them a little bit, but maybe there's like an actual. Oh, I got it. Yeah, I know exactly what it is. Oh, yeah. Well, there's actually one right before it, but it's, the context would be very confusing. But the earliest real identifiable one is um, watching the moon landing. Oh, Because uh, I was the youngest the in the family. I was the youngest in the family, so I was this little baby, wow. and I'm leaning against. I kept crawling onto the uh, the screen to watch because everyone's hovering around the TV, oh, and yeah. everyone's yelling at me to get out of the way, get out of the way. <laughs> and I was had my hands up on the screen, thinking, "What is that? What are they doing?" <laughs> it was pretty. It was pretty amazing. But I, yeah, I just seem to remember that. And I, fancy enough, I just a few. What a, you know, when I was still a kid, I, I got to meet Buzz Aldrin, which was really cool. No way. Way into science, space, and all that stuff. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. pretty cool. Very interesting. I like that. Oh, I'm in this source of interesting things, Anna. Pardon me? <laughs> I'm an endless source of interesting things. Yes, darling, of course. When would it and if I'm not, then I'll make it up. <laughs> How cool is this? I get to sit out on the street here in Venice and drink beer. Listen I love to music. it. I love it. It's so freeing, isn't it? Uh, it is a little bit liberating in this little spot. Yeah. yeah. So have you heard? Okay, wait, this is a little side note, but ha just because we're discussing the freeness of Venice and you're chilling. Um, have you heard that, that um, even, uh, I think it was Dr. Gunn even mentioned it last night. He said 2021 is like the year of the party or something like that. But I've heard that before. That, that this is going to be like the roaring 20s. Was it you? Did you tell me that? I didn't say that, but I I could probably tell you that with most certainty more than anybody because I'm doing it right now. I'm just, I just cracked open this little box here 
stick it in the middle of the road, and all of a sudden there's a couple hundred people standing around jumping and screaming and hollering. I know. Um, so obviously, it's as soon as just the gates open on this horse race, but you're going to see a flood of people in the streets. And do you think that they're going to shut you down if they open the bars? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, the police here have been so cool with me and the music box. Yes. Seriously. Um, I think they know that we're not causing problems and we're, we're keeping a pretty cool uh, yeah. crowd, even though it's getting kind of big. Yeah. Everyone's very cool and hopeful, and uh, and I'm not pushing it anytime they say, hey, it's time, guys, because, you know, sometimes we do get a little late. Yeah. Uh, then we just So I'm not sure exactly how it'll play out, but I think uh, the popularity of it is starting to become such a, a galvanizing thing here in this neighborhood. I think it'll probably keep going to some extent. Um, uh, speaking of which, though, we, we are going to have to move locations by next month because uh, they're tearing out PD's shop. So we just got word that he's just got a month here left here at Only in Venice. Uh, they're going to the uh, owner on the corner wants to tear these buildings down to make some room for his restaurant. So, yeah, I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's it. I don't know the whole story, but I just know you know. Uh, PD's trying to scramble to find other ways of making his living here. You know, his shop's getting closed, so. Uh, so, you know, we're all, we're all, uh, I, I don't know what, what he can do to kind of keep it going, but either way, I mean, I'm flexible, obviously. It's not, it's not a harsh for me, it's harsh for him, but uh, we will be moving it somewhere around here. Um, and, you know, that'll just happen naturally, just like. Do, when are they doing that? Supposed to be, they only given him a month notice, so so it'll probably be April they'll start working on it. Well, I will help and keep my ears open and do some groundwork to find some, some uh, there's got to be something on Abbott Kinney um, that we could all chip into and help police or whatever. I mean, these people have gone yeah, not, to the point where they're desperate. Anyway. Yeah. I'm, not gonna, I'm, not, I'm not really worried about it because, yeah. you know, every, t every time I put this box somewhere, the crowds come, so it doesn't matter where I set it up. Um, well, I had to find it a whole bunch of times because I looked for it so many times, and I'm like, "Oh, you're online." <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, and now you know it's. Yeah, like I said, I'm not worried about. I'm more worried about for Petey. I want to make sure he get, finds a good spot because well, uh, he's done. He's, so he's done so much to help support this whole thing, giving us this little this little area, and I want him to to, to take you know be taken care of. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Well, we'll help. We'll get there. We'll pitch in. We'll, we'll do it. Um, so definitely, you know, you get a good vet, uh, community in Venice. That's one of the best reasons why I'm down here. And I don't live here anymore. I used to live here a long time ago, but I um, I live up in Burbank. So, uh, you know, I just come down here because this is a good community and I have tons of friends and stuff. So um, it seemed like the really right place to be. You know, um, I've lived here quite a while. I've seen quite, quite a bunch of changes. And... Um, yeah the the stability is still a very strong core and it's beautiful and Petey is one of those people he actually was the a pivotal influence in me getting started I mean he did my first videos and my first editing and my first everything so oh, yeah he's a he's a good man he's a good man yeah. we'll get him hooked up for sure I don't know how but we will okay Next, everybody go yep. shop at Benny's Vintage now. <laughs> no, wait, not now, yeah. in an hour. <laughs> okay, um, I've got another question for you. Are you ready? Okay. Uh, three words that you can to describe yourself. Wait, say that again? Three words to describe yourself. Uh, how about four? Can I do four? Yes. Uh, Siliously surreal. <laughs> Manifestly stubborn. <laughs> How about that? First of all, I love that you made up words grammatically. <laughs> Um, second of all, you really went to the spectrum. I mean, you well, went to the spectrum. Kind of right. <laughs> I am on the spectrum, I believe. Um, <laughs> so. 
<laughs> no, I shouldn't you sing that. I'm sorry, because that's, that's kind of disrespectful to people who are. Uh, but that particular spectrum. Uh, no, I, I, I like spectrums because I, I, uh, I like to have limitations. I work better with limitations. Um, um, right. I think I, I, that's normal. That's that's normal. Everybody, yeah, that's normal. Yeah. We're kind of used to those kind of like pusher things. But I find it very interesting because you are, very, what was it, silliest? Um, Silliestly surreal? Surreal. Yeah. Seriously, silliest surreal. And then um, it was what? Manifestly Manifestable. Manifestly, Manifestly stubborn. Stubborn. <laughs> now that's the hard part. Well, you know, do you feel the necessity to manifest stubbornness, or are you just already stubborn? I am already stubborn, but I am in, stubborn about manifesting. Stubborn. I'm stubborn about manifesting. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I see. My relentless play on words. I I can't not play words with. I mean, it's silly not to play with words, right? They're like little toys. So, yeah. of course, you're going to play with them. Yeah, they're little sounds. You string them together. Yeah. Why should we be limited by somebody else's definition of them? I agree. Uh, I agree 100%. Very There's a reason why the, the box becomes a metaphor for me, actually. <laughs> That's not how I think about it. So, how is that? Well, it is in itself. It is a box. Yes. So, it, it is, by definition, a limitation but it also becomes a vessel. So kind of cool Ooh, in that and way. And you step outside of that box very often. Never. Oh, you're always, always outside in of it. the box. <laughs> even, if I'm, even if I'm physically outside of it. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. You know, that's very good. That's very good. I, so you have the lightheartedness to continue in your perseverance of whatever dream you choose to set your yeah. eye on. Yes. Well done. All right. Oh, All right. Ready for another question? Oh my goodness! They keep coming. All right. Well, I mean, okay. It is an interview, after all. I know. Let's see, I kind of go overboard, but I will pick um, two or three more if you want. This is okay. just like, what was your first concert that you went to? How old were you? Oh man, my first. Well. Technically, my first concert was uh, Mitzi Gaynor. Wow. Yeah, do you know Mitzi Gaynor? No, but I know. She's a famous old Gaynor actress, me. dancer, singer. Yeah. My folks took, her t took me to see her. And then. Uh, Gloria Gaynor. Uh, my, one of my older sisters took me to a um, day on the green uh, back in the 70s. Wait. Oh, so my what, God. What state is that? The day, day on the Greens were in California. There were all these like this mega stadium shows with a bunch of different bands, always rock bands, you know. They, they were huge. There was a huge time there where they were. It was like super shows with like seven or eight uh, big the bands. <laughs> or the Oz yeah, Fest. Yeah, just like that. But it was a. They used to call them Day on the Green because it was in the stadiums, and they just you'd be sitting out on the lawn in the outfield of the baseball stadium or whatever. Oh, how lovely. Yeah. Like a Saturday in the park. Yeah. Saturday. I like that. How lucky. It was fun. And I think uh, Aria Speedwagon was headlining. Oh, my goodness. And uh, Kansas was playing. Oh, my goodness. And UFO. I just watched them the other day. I and uh, uh, 38 Specials. And this is before you ever heard of them. They were just starting out. Um, and that was, there was one other one. Oh, Gamma. It was quite the rock show. Wow. How old were you? Oh, I love this song, Petey. Petey's oh, playing. He's such, a favorite. he's such a good DJ. Is Petey DJing for yeah, you? Dude. Is that Sam Cooke? Yeah. Oh, I love that. All right. What was the first album you ever owned? Falling in my grave, oh, bring it on, bring it on, little sweet love, bring it on home to me, yeah, yeah. Oh man, my throat is trash from last night. We had a, uh, <laughs> did, did you stay to see the spiel play? No. You missed it, oh my heaven. 
I have to After yelling and screaming at everyone all night, then I had to go up and sing and play drums. Wow, oh, man, I ripped the hell out of my voice. <clears throat> oh, you had such a blast. It was fun. I'm going to come later tonight so I can stay later. Uh, well, one of the, the big spectacles of Spiel is that it's the one band that has drums inside, the drum sets inside the box. Like Get a whole drum, drum set, set inside the box. No, old drum set. How do you do that? Well, you'll see, I'm sure there's all kinds of posts coming up. Okay, I'm going to have to yeah. look that up. I'm going to look that up. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready for another question? Okay. I'll pick you two more. How's that? All right, two or more. Okay. What do you know absolutely to be true in this world? One thing that's absolutely true. You know. I don't know. Uh, absolutely true. Wow. Uh, I guess. Um, frequency. That's the only thing I know of for sure. <laughs> I think it's all holding us together and binding our, our little atoms together. That's the only thing I know for sure. Everything else is a bit nebulous. And how? So like the frequency, vibrations, aura? Yeah, frequencies are what hold all of our atoms together. Do we have, do we, is there a way we can move our frequencies or do we just have to sit there and soak them up? Well, they, um, I think some people can. Um, that's why some people can fly on a, uh, unassisted. Some people can hold their breath for 20 minutes, you know, do things that are completely out of the norm because they know how to m manipulate the frequencies that hold their atoms together a little bit. You know, we'll figure that out a little later. Probably take us another, you know, couple hundred years. If we don't kill ourselves, we'll probably figure out how to do those things. Oh, I like that. So, so. But all the rest of it's all a little bit nebulous. You know, sometimes we all think we're just floating around in our own, own little dream. So it's hard to say what's true nowadays. Yeah. Well, ever, really. But. I like that. I like the, um. I like the idea of the depthness of, you know, our frequencies are the one thing that's 100% true. So we can choose to adjust and to move that frequency, you know, however, um, however we'll we can to be yeah, able to do that and find the tools to do that. Do you have tools for your frequency? I'm trying to move over where I can hear you a little better. Oh. It's getting way too loud over here. Hold on a second. Here, I'll go in the chopper. This will be better. Oh, he's got music on there. Great. So here we are, the uh, lovely... <laughs> oh, he's got a system of a down shirt here. Benefit. That's kind of cool. What are you going to wear? Is Petey going to... What are you going to wear tomorrow? To Radio Venice or tonight? Oh, I was thinking like a, like a feather boa. He's got some boas here somewhere. Oh, I like feather boas. I think that's a great. He's got I don't know. He's got a killer hat here. This cowboy hat. What do you think? This one good. Yeah. I got some really killer boots from uh, from PD not too long ago, and um, but they kill my feet. Oh, it was horrible. I said suffered for the whole day after wearing. Them. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you're when it looks good, ah, you sometimes have to put up with that, right, ladies? Of course. Because, you know, girls wear high heels and they kill us, so. <laughs> uh, it's horrible. Yeah. For some creepy reason. I like it. I like the hat. Go for it. Um, okay. So what was, that, what, was the last, I'm sorry, what was the last part of that last question? Wait, what? Oh, the truth? Are we still on truth? Oh, yes. Did we? Did um, I, you know, I will say one more thing about that. Yeah. Um, if you ask someone what they would think of as truth, I think ask what a little, little kid would say about that. And they're probably more accurate than an adult could figure out. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, well, yes. 
it is quite amazing. You can look at kids and ask them, what are they going to tell me today that will blow your mind? And that could be one of those questions. Like, how do you know if something's uh -oh, being, someone's... you know, 100%? True? Sorry. Yeah. What I you lost know? you there. Hold on a second. Somebody was uh, calling and your the volume just shot off. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can't hear you, though. Oh. Um, what happened there? Maybe they're leaving you a We're going to have to use smoke signals. I can't okay. see what happened. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. How, how are we going to figure that one out? Did uh, I have to read backwards? What? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell happened? Somebody just tried to call me as we were in the middle of this, and uh, and it just knocked your volume off. And I don't see any, uh, what is that? I'm just going to, no, live now. Okay. What? It, damn, what is he saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, heavens to Murgatroyd. What do you think? Where's Murgatroyd, by the way? Does anybody know? Does anybody know where Murgatroyd is? Murgatroyd. Do you know? Can That's my question to you, Hannah. Um, I always I heard that Murgatroyd was someplace, but I don't know. I never heard of it. I looked all over the map for it. I couldn't find it. Well, well, young lady, I, I, I don't know how to get the volume back on. Uh, unless I, unless we uh, hang up and try to call it back, I'll try. But if I can't get to you, I want to say bye and thank you for having me on your show and you're such a lovely lady and i had a, a lot of fun hanging out with you guys and uh yeah i hope to see you again later tonight or you know another time okay bye, bye. thank you so much bye everybody thank you so much for joining sorry the sound got lost at the end but i did have more questions for him so we'll get back to them another time bye Hey y'all!